church. Welcome everyone joining us online this morning. Everyone stand up to your feet as we praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this new year. Come on. Put your hands together. We're going to bring in the new year with some praises on our way to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. I see lightning, I hear thunder. Something's stirring. Something's stirring six feet under. Well, dead things coming back to life. Dead things coming back to life again. I believe there's about to be another resurrection. Oh, yeah. I see signs and I see wonders. And I see signs and I see wonders. Yeah. I see birds of living colors. Dead things coming back to life again. Resurrection. Resurrection. Come on. Come on. Life. Put your hands together. Praise the King. Wake up, sleeper. He is risen. And we are risen with him. Oh. Come on. Declare. Hallelujah.
reason to praise the Lord. I've got a reason to praise the Lord. I praise in the valleys. I praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. And I praise when I'm doubting. Oh. My praise is I praise when surrounded. My praise is the waters. My enemies drowned in. Come on, let everything. So as long as I breathe, I got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. And I want to praise. Praise when I feel it. Come on. And I praise when I don't. Let's celebrate the king this morning. The praise when I know you're still in control. Praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. Hey, hey. It's more than a sound. Oh, come on, it's a shout. My praise is a shout. Hey, hey. Let the go down, down, down. down. As long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, declare that. I want to praise the Lord, oh my soul. My soul. I won't be quiet, my God is alive, so how good I keep it inside. Put your praise. hands together for the king this morning. Got the joy of the Lord. Praise. 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 I praise because you're sovereign. I praise because you reign. I praise because you rose and defeated the rain. I praise because you're faithful. I praise because you're true. I praise because there's nobody. Come on, let that open. I praise cause you I praise cause you reign. I praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. I praise cause you're true. I praise cause there's nobody greater than you. to shout. We have a 
have a reason to sing. We have a reason to live. Oh, come on and worship the name of Jesus this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we worship you today. We worship you and honor you today. Thank you, Father, for being such a good, good Father. As we go into this time of worship, I just want to encourage you with this scripture. Philippians 2.9, it says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed upon him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to glory of the God our Father. So today, Lord, let's lift up our hands in reverence of the King. Jesus, we worship you and we thank you that you put your name above every other name, that you put your name above every sickness, above every politician, above this world, God, that you have gained the victory so that we can have the victory, God. We thank you so much and we worship you today, right now, in truth and in spirit, Father. We worship you today and we thank you that that name is a beautiful name. That because of that name, we are free. And because of that name, we can walk in the fullness of joy that you have planned for us. So Jesus, we worship you today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we worship. Oh, Jesus. Just sing with me. You were the word of the beginning. One with God, the Lord Most High. You hid glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is, yes. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You are never without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, but your love. My sin was great, your love was greater. Oh, what could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, our King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a wonderful name it is. The name of oh, Jesus, what a wonderful name it is, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King, what a wonderful name it is, nothing can stand again. We worship you, Christ the King. We worship you, Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, the fairest of 10,000, the lily of the valley, the Lamb of God, the magistrate of heaven, King of majesty, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. We 
give you praise. We give you honor. We give you all our hearts today, God. You and you alone are worthy of our worship. Oh, come on, sing. Sing that could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silence the boast of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring. Praise, praise of your glory. Praise, you are raised to Come on, you have no right for just declare it. Declare it. You have no
Worship the King, worship the King. And I exalt your presence flow in this place, Holy Spirit. I exalt Jesus. And I exalt oh, 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 oh. Just for one more minute, can we worship the King? Come on. And I exalt oh, I exalt I exalt King Jesus And I exalt oh, 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 oh. And I with Jesus this morning. We're going to do something very special this morning. We're going to take Holy Communion on the first Sunday of this year. So we can have uh, the ushers and usherettes come to the front. I just want to remind you that every time we take this, we remember just like the Lord Jesus Christ said, as often as you take this, remember. What do we remember? Well, we remember that he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That he's the one that spoke everything into existence with one breath of his nostrils. Everything came into existence. That's the king that we serve. And then we remember the sacrifice that he gave and the father gave his son that we don't even understand. Why? How? But he did it so much and he was compelled to do it because he loved us so much. And then we remember who God has made us to be. That we are not just forgiven, even though that's awesome. We're not just servants, even though that's enough. But he's made us to be sons and daughters of the Most High God. As we take this this morning, remember who he is, what he's done, and who he's made us to be. Father, right now we remember. And we thank you, and we love you, and we receive everything that you have for us. In honor of you, we receive healing. In honor of you, we receive and walk in prosperity. And in honor of you, we receive salvation and forgiveness of sins. We worship you and we thank you, Jesus Christ, for giving us life. And we celebrate it and remember it by taking Holy Communion this first day of this year. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless this communion in Jesus' name. We're going to have the ushers and usherettes guide you from the back row to the front row. You can come up. Take it back to your seat. Take it right there with your family or just right there with you and Jesus and remember. And I want to tell you, if you need healing in your body, this is one of the best times to take. Just receive it because by his stripes we are healed and we're healed. And if you need to confess and get right with God, this is one of the greatest times you could ever do it, remembering what he's done. So let's go ahead and do that. As we continue to worship, you can just follow the ushers back.
together with praise on our lips and here I am to worship here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God you're all together lovely and all together worthy all together wonderful to Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, and all together wonderful to me. And here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. All together loving, all together worthy. You're all together wonderful to me. Come on and give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Pastor Lisa, come and greet us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you, God. We exalt your name on high, God. There's no one like you, God. Father, we magnify you. Holy Spirit, have your way in this house. Holy Spirit, touch every person in this place. Have your way. Move in their lives. Speak to them. Open their ears. Open their eyes to hear the truth, God. Father, we magnify you. You are the head pastor of this church, and we thank you, Lord, for having your way in this place. Father, we magnify you. We dedicate this year, 2024, to you, and we magnify your holy name in Jesus' name. And all God's people say amen. Amen, amen. Give King Jesus another shout. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being in this place. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Amen. How's everyone doing, Faith City? You're all doing good? Well, before you're seated, go ahead and find someone that you don't know. Give them a pound and say, you have a purpose for a purpose. Turn to your other neighbor and say, you have a purpose for a purpose. Amen. Y'all look good this Sunday morning. But real quick, we do want to welcome everyone. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you to Faith City. If you, um, if this is your first time, we do have a special gift for you out in the Welcome Center at the Connect table. Make sure you grab your gift from us. We have been praying and fasting for you, and we believe that God has a great plan for you. Amen. But um, real quick, um, before we get started, y'all can enjoy these announcements. 
Welcome to Faith City Church and Happy New Year's. If it's your first time here, we have a special guest waiting just outside at the Connect table just for you. Here are some of our upcoming events. Hello Team 100. That's anybody who's involved in a ministry here at Faith City Church. Now if you want to jump in and be a part of Team 100 and start serving in a ministry, this meeting is just for you. January the 11th at 6 p.m. Pastor Lane is going to be giving out a vision for this next year, for 2024. And so you should come get involved and help serve at Faith City Church. Remember, January the 11th. Don't miss out. Men, come get filled at our Bible study, January 13th. The question is, what did Jesus say to Jairus when everybody was laughing at him? What did he tell us? Yeah, okay. All right. Join us for our prayer meeting, January 12th at 6 p.m. Young adults, let's have fun at Top Golf. Sign up at the Connect booth. Water baptisms are scheduled January 21st during the second service. If you're interested in getting baptized, come sign up at the Connect booth. I hope you enjoyed all of those announcements. Now, if you missed anything, make sure to check out our website where it has all of the info. Now, here at Faith City Church, this is our motto, to love God, love people, and make Jesus famous. Now, lean in and enjoy the service. Oh, yeah. Somebody give Jesus a hand clap for being up in this place. Man, just turn to somebody and say, Happy New Year. Praise God. It's great to see every all these great faces and there's some new faces, some people that, man, are coming back off of vacation. Praise the Lord. We trust everybody had a great year. Listen, we had an amazing Christmas season this year. We were able to give, Pastor Lisa, we went on the streets and we gave out, what, 700 gifts? Praise God. You gave out 700 gifts. Many salvations. It was just a great time of celebration. God is doing some great things. But we're going to take our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. But before we do, I want to say that we are in, you are in for a humongous treat this morning. A humongous treat. I see some of y'all's faces were here in the first service, so it's not a surprise. But my pastor, my pastors, Pastor Eileen and Pastor Jeff, are in the house this morning. And... As crazy as this sounds, they said, I, we just want to come and visit. I said, no, you won't. You're going to come and visit. you will come and preach. You're going to come and depart. And so many of y'all have heard us tell many stories, um, uh, a lot of different things. But this is our pastor of, uh, well, I'll just, I'll talk, I'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, I just want to say we're going to take up an offering. But in a minute, um, but we're going to do this. We're going to do it now for this offering. So what I want, I want to go ahead and say this, that they have been our pastors for 31 years. Listen, my whole adult life, I think I've, a long time, we started when we were negative five. But anyway, I don't want to give away any ages or anything, but they've been, they've all been our pastors for 31 years. And anything good that you've experienced in this church, obviously is from Jesus, yes. But it's from a man and woman of God who's poured into our lives for decades. And so I want y'all to kind of feel the weight of what's going on here this morning. He, they, you know, from since, you know, high school, even middle school, up, has just poured into us and poured into us. And the spirit of faith that you see, the spirit of evangelism that you see, the spirit of just passion and worship, we, that was imparted into us. Um, by our pastors, and so we're so blessed to have them here. Give them a hand clap, y'all, for being there. And then also, we have the Callaways here as well, part of the family. And y'all know that they, we y'all seen them before, Rachel and Drew, and and Noah and Bridger, and and everybody else. Is the whole family here? Ever the children's shirts and Eva and everybody. So man, we, we got a whole bunch of going on. And they take up a whole section, y'all. We had to have them go over there. But anyway, it's such an honor. Give them a hand clap. We love y'all guys. Y'all are truly family. But the reason why I want to introduce them now is because we're taking up an offering, and so you can 
you know, your tithes, you can bring them. But we're going to take up an offering. They are right in, they didn't know. Actually, he said, don't do it. But I'm going to do it anyway. I'm being disobedient this morning, Pastor Jeff. But we are going to take up an offering for their building project. Um, they are building two brand new churches. Somebody say two. Um, but they're building church buildings, and so they're the same in Huntsville location. That's where I was raised up, and then Willis location. God is blessing them where they're going to be able to build two brand new church facilities on the freeway. In Jesus' name, on the freeway. Uh, 45, and so whenever y'all pass through Willis, and then y'all salute G uh, General Sam Houston in Huntsville right past that, y'all gonna see Family Faith Church up in the house there, and so we cannot let this go by. We want to be a part of that. We've always been part. We're in covenant, and we always will. They will always be our pastors, just to let you know that. They will always be our pastors, and we'll always be in covenant with them. But we don't want to let this opportunity to go by without us covenanting financially with them. And so we, we've already given an offering, a substantial amount, and, and Faith City Church is giving an offering. But I want you to get in on it. Listen, God can do a lot of stuff without me, but I don't want him to. I won't be right there in the middle of it. Listen, he's going to pay for those churches, I guarantee you. He's going to pay for our, we're believing, I said, Pastor Lane, we're believing God for a campus. And, and we need money to grow. I and mean, look, we don't have enough church. Absolutely. When you have a need, sow a seed. I know that's cliche and it sounds great, but it's true. It's true. And so I just want to say that we want to, not only do we want seed in the ground and the harvest and everything, I just, I love these people. And I know that they're going to get people saved. I know they're going to love young people and teenagers and the next generation and older people. I don't know. That's not a popular word anymore, but more mature people, okay? They're going to love this world, and I just know it. It's a tried and true, uh, proven track record. So I want to be a part of that, and I want to give you an opportunity to be a part of that. So if you want to do that, you just check on the box offering, or if you give text or online or however you want to give, you can just said on the envelope put offering and the entirety of this offering will go towards the family faith church building project and then like i said above and beyond your tithes and so we are blessed to be a blessing somebody say amen so we're going to take up the offering knowing that some of y'all have met them some of y'all have no idea who they are but i just want to say this again if you have experienced any kind of change in this church Salvation, healing, love, a, a great experience for your family to be um, just revolutionized. It's because this man and woman stood in faith for decades and they haven't given up on their calling. And man, they have really, they're reaching a generation. It's because of what they poured into us. So I just want to say reciprocate that. Always, always. The Bible says in Galatians 6, it says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also Reap, And so we want to sow into something like that. So they, they don't need it. We want to give to the people that are, you know, homeless. Yes. The, the Bible says don't neglect the homeless. But it also says that we need to be, he supplies seed to the sower. And so if you see somebody doing great things, it's always good to jump in and bless them because you want to connect with what they're doing. And that's what we're doing this morning. So we're going to take up this tithe and offering. We don't give out of, you know, um, some emotional hype. We don't give because we're going to turn out the lights or throw some pictures up there. Somebody starving. No, we just give because the word of God says give. And that's what we're going to do this morning. So let's pray over this offering. Father, I pray that you'll bless this offering. Multiply it. I thank you, Lord God, that Family Faith Church will build these state-of-the-art, amazing, humongous campuses to reach these this region and this generation. And I call in the finances. I thank you that it will be paid in full, Lord, with money in the bank. In Jesus' name, when it's completed, we call this and we put our money where our mouth is and we join in in covenant with them with our finances in the mighty name of Jesus and everybody said amen and amen give Jesus a hand clap you can receive the offering and pass the buckets out Pastor Lisa you want to come up here with me say as we greet them I, I just want to say a couple things as y'all receive the offering um, you want to stand, come up here and stand with me all my all by myself up here. Listen, I'm usually down there, but from pastor's request, he wants to preach up here um, because there's more lighting up here. Y'all can't see in the dark down there. Um, but anyway, he's going to bring the anointing up here. But I just do want to say this. I don't know if you want to say anything real quick and then give.
Yeah, he keeps saying my pastor, my pastor, but he's also my pastor. <laughs> Our pastor. Yeah, we had I had to fix that real quick. But we, we salute Pastor Jeff and Eileen. I love them so much. They are my spiritual parents. They've been there for a long time. They, I literally went there. I started going there um, when I was younger, <laughs> praise the Lord. And uh, so I started going there, and I planted myself. The Lord showed me. He says, this is where you need to be connected to. So I stay connected until the Lord has something else for us. But um, And then Rachel and, and Drew and their family. And Rachel's like a daughter to us, like our other daughter. And the daughter that I don't have, but there's Rachel. So she, we love her and her other her other two siblings, um, John and, and, and Sarah. And uh, we just want to salute Pastor Jeff and Eileen because they're the best of ever. I mean, like, y'all, y'all can't ask for a better pastor. I, I always say this. I said, only God gives you the best, and God gave us the best with Pastor Jeff and Eileen. Absolutely, and so we—I don't want y'all to think we don't have a guest minister today. This is home. This is home, Pastor Jeff, Pastor Eileen. This is your home away from home. No matter how often you come, this is all. This will always be a part of that. But I just want to say thank y'all for everything you've done. So what I want to do, many things that I say, I don't give Pastor Jeff credit for or Pastor Eileen. I just take all the credit, give Jesus the credit. But I just like, no, that's mine. But a lot of the sermons I preach, I promise you, I'm getting a lot of stuff from him. But I want to give, I want to say one of the sayings that he used to always say, and I want to say it. You've heard me say this, but I want you to get your expectors on, okay? Just everybody reach up and turn your expector all the way on, break off. Off the knob because listen if if you're hungry you will be fed the bible said jesus said blessed are those that that what blessed are those that what blessed are those that what hunger and thirst for they shall be filled so if you're hungry you'll be filled let me give you this nugget of wisdom before we jump in and get this apostolic powerful prophetic word i promise you listen jesus went to his own hometown, and the Bible says this. I'm about to ready to blow your doctrine out of the water. This is Bible. This is this is in the Bible. It says that he could not do any great work. What is that about? What I thought Jesus was God. I mean, but obviously there was something had to do with their hunger or their dishonor that they could not. And so you also went into other places and said Jesus healed them all. They were just all like, oh, my goodness, the Messiah, and he just healed everything. So he was God all the time, but their hunger had something to do with it. So I ask you this morning, lean in and be hungry for the word of God. He would, Pastor Jeff would never, you know, he doesn't, he's not all about titles. I promise you I know that for many years. But I will say this, he is an apostle, true apostle to me um, in every form of the, the word. And so he has a, and this is a prophetic word, so I just want us to lean in and grab what the Holy Ghost is saying to this church right now. It's very timely. So let's stand up and give Jesus Christ, the head of the church, a hand clap for sending us Pastor Jeff. Amen, amen. You can, let's give Jesus a hand clap, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Uh, Such an honor to be here on the first Sunday of 2024. It's an honor. It's last time I was, I was here, I think it was the uh, one-year anniversary. I mean, we all, you guys were meeting in a, four years ago in a school. You guys, and man, here you are just tearing it up. And I, I just, prophetically, I want to say to you as a church, that listen, God is still just laying the foundation. You've got some big, big days ahead of you. Amen. Um, I literally, I felt like the Holy Ghost was telling me this because when we leave here today, we're driving to Joplin, Missouri, and we're going to, to once again, meet with engineers and architects and all that for the new building. And literally, when it comes to Faith City, they're still working on the blueprints, okay? All right? Just like we're doing with our church right now. Man, you've got a lot of good stuff in front of you and a lot of great stuff that's going to happen. So, And I want to prophetically say it again. Uh, I said it in Missouri. I'm, I said it this morning. But uh, Lane and Lisa, um, um, they first, Lane came to our church in the eighth grade in Huntsville, Texas. And the entire Arnold family became a part of our church as mom. And, and she was just a super blessing. And all the family, the whole family. And, um, and then, and I think his mom had a Church of Christ background. So it was a little bit of a shock when they came to our church. 
you know, when that music went on, he was learning to play the guitar in eighth grade. And, um, and literally, he had a passion for ministry almost from the day he walked in the door. And that's all he's done and all he's wanted to do is preach the gospel, win people for Christ, worship God, and lead the next generation to God. Now, his mom made him get a degree from Sam Houston State University. I want to clarify that. Now, my, my kids will tell me the same thing. I made them do it, okay? And he might have made C's, but he made it through it, okay? I'm not even going to tell you what his GPA was. Yes, yeah, because he was busy preaching and singing. And like Lisa said, she came early. Her family came, the Cisneros family. That's her maiden name. We, uh, <clears throat> They became a part of our family, not just a part of our church. Lane and Lisa ended up getting married, and they literally were our youth pastors. They were on staff for 22 years in our church. And guys, when I tell you that they literally did not just have a youth um, um you know, not just a youth group. They had a youth ministry. There's literally thousands, probably tens of thousands of young people that got saved over the course of that time. I know there was a one to two year stretch where about, and this is in Huntsville, Texas, there was about 25 to 30 young people that got saved every Friday night, every Friday night. <laughs> New young people would get saved. And I mean, just there's thousands of young people that are saved. Some are already in heaven because of accidents and things like that. But um, I cannot say enough about them. We've not all, we've like to say for the last 22 years, we have worked hard and we have played hard together. Okay, and that is just the absolute truth. Um, we've swam the highest. I'm not the highest. We swam the longest river and climbed the highest mountains for Jesus. And for fun, amen. And uh, we built churches. We built about everything you can think of. We've been on missions trips. Uh, we've literally just, you know, day and night. I mean this too. They've worked for Jesus their whole life. And let me tell you, they have three of the greatest young children. You're not, you're not young anymore, but three. I always remind them, and this hurts them when I say it. I always remember, I say, y'all have a legal adult in your house right now. And they go, oh my God, don't say that. Because they're all, many of you know our kids are all supposed to be babies, right? And, uh, but they have three of the finest young uh, children on the planet. And I mean that too. We call them the A team. We call them the A team. But I know something most of you don't know that, that their seek, one of their secrets is that they went out on the streets of Huntsville, Texas, and the whole county. Oh, region, actually. And they ministered to young people. And they went out when moms and grandmas could not control or could not find help for their kids. Guess what? Lane and Lisa and their youth ministry went in and did for those grandmothers what they could not do for themselves. They went in and did for those moms, those dads, what they could not do for themselves. I'm going to tell you right now, what you make happen for others when it comes to the kingdom of God, God will make happen for you. And I'm telling you, Pauline, Judah, and Levi have got some great blessings because there's seeds they don't even know about. Thousands and thousands of seeds that they know not of that were planted before they ever showed up. But I'm, I'm witness of it, amen? I didn't do it. They did it, but I got witness of it because they literally just took off and ran with the, with the youth ministry, the worship ministry. Uh, you know, man, Lane could lead worship anywhere in the world right now at any church in the world, but thank God you got him right here. You got the best of the best of the best um, <clears throat> worship. It's just you guys have the real deal and, and, and really truly with the right heart and the what I call the Jesus-style ministry happening right here in front of you. And, Man, it's just awesome, but you're just getting started, amen? It's so good to see Kathy Hartman. Kathy Hartman goes back further than that. When Eileen went to Bible school, <clears throat> Kathy Hartman drug her off in the closet. And this is when Eileen was in Bible school. Kathy, raised your hand right there. And she said, have you, have you met this boy named Jeff Hackleman? And she said, I, I don't even know he exists. And uh, anyways... She ended up meeting me, and here we are 37 years later after being married. So, Kathy, Kathy might be to blame for all this. Amen? And um, 
And and then um, it's so good to see Isla Branson, her son. Isla, lift your hand. Uh, her son and and daughter in law were one of our campus pastors for many many years. Did an incredible job in a small town called Cold Spring, Texas. Has anybody ever heard of it before? Did an amazing job. They've been members of the family and just. You know, I watch God just go in, and I watch David serve God, and then I watch all the families just start just kind of falling into place. Same way with Lisa's family. Same way, of course, Lane's family came out of Church of Christ, so they were kind of on the wrong path, amen? <laughs> but then they got on the right path, amen? That's kind of what happened with them. And uh, so we're going to jump right into the Word of God, but it really is an honor truly to be here um, and just be a part of what God is doing through this whole church it takes a whole army to to make it happen, it, you know. But I, I, I just say that there's an anointing on Lane and Lisa to reach that next generation. And don't think just because you're a senior pastor now that that anointing leaves you. It leaves some of them like it left me, amen? But it's not ever going to leave y'all, okay? You're going to have an anointing with you and your children to reach the next generation for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. You're going to have it. So keep the Jesus-style hair and keep going and keep reaching and keep doing. Amen. So uh, Luke chapter 11, St. Luke chapter 11. Um, you know, um, we'll uh, start with verse 1, Luke 11. This will be our master text. We may read a few other verses, but... It says, and it came to pass that he was, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. How many of you know they were watching Jesus pray? And when they were through watching him pray, they said, teach us to do that. There should be something in us. That wherever we go, people want to say, hey, teach me to do that also. Teach me to worship like that. Teach me to pray like that. Teach me to witness like that. Teach me to serve God like that. Teach me to talk like that. Teach me to live like that. And he said unto them, when you pray, so he's teaching them a prayer lesson. And, and, and he said, when you pray, Say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so on earth. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend? Now he's still teaching on prayer. Notice there's an and in verse 5. Even though he finished the Lord's prayer, now he's just still teaching on prayer, and he kind of goes off on this parable. He just kind of goes off the tracks, you might say, okay? Starts telling this crazy story. He said unto them, this is prayer teaching, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he, saved from within, shall answer, trouble me not. The door is shut. By the way, it's midnight. My children are asleep. Let me just say it in my words. Get out of here. And then verse 8, he says, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give it to him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, still teaching on prayer, ask. Now when he says ask, in the Greek, there are what we call continuous action verbs. We don't necessarily have that connotation in English, but in the Greek, it can tell you if it's a present verb or a continuous action with several kinds of verbs. But this, these particular commands, if you will, are continuous action verbs. It doesn't mean you do it one time. It means you do it today, you do it tomorrow, you do it the next day, and you keep on doing it. So he literally says this, and I say unto you, ask and keep on asking, and I shall be, it shall be given you. Seek and keep on seeking, and you shall find. Knock and keep on knocking, and I will open unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. Let me say it this way. For everyone that asketh and keep asking receiveth. He that seeketh and keeps seeking findeth, and to him that knocks 
and keeps knocking, it shall be opened unto him. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he, will he give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? This morning, um, I want to talk to you about uh, the posturing, posturing for 2024, positioning yourself so that when the doors open, you're actually ready to go through it. It's one thing to have an open door, but I've seen a lot of people get a lot of open doors. In fact, for many people, it happens on a regular basis, but they never go through the door. How many of you believe there's missed opportunities every year of our life? So we want to position ourselves so when that door opens, we were waiting for it to open because we were knocking on that door. We were seeking and we were asking. So we want to talk about positioning or posturing ourselves for 20. 24, and we're going to be ready for overflow. Amen? Posturing ourselves for 2024. When the disciple said, teach us to pray, understand, how many of you would like for Jesus to come down right now and kick me off the stage and sit down and say, let me teach you guys how to pray? Would that be cool or what? Would you take notes? Some of you aren't taking notes when I talk, but you would take notes if he talked. Your notebook would come flying out. Amen? Amen? And, uh, and, and for Jesus just to sit down and whatever he taught you, you better look at it close because it's got some stuff in it. Guess what? He just did that to us right here. His disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. Boy, we better sit down and listen and start taking notes on this one. And so in the first lesson, verses 1 through 4, he gives us the Lord's Prayer, the lesson on prayer, what we might call the model prayer, the rhythm of prayer, the structure of prayer. The second, when he kind of shifts gears and goes into a parable, verse 5 through 10, he's showing us how to receive in prayer. And then the third lesson, verses 11 through 13, he reminds us of God's nature and his faithfulness. He reminds you the one you're praying to knows how to give you the answer. If you ask for a fish, he's not going to give you a scorpion. In other words, you can take it to the bank. He is faithful to give you what you ask. And we need that kind of trust and security. Amen? And so um, let's just talk for a moment about the Lord's Prayer. First of all, let me remind you, in the Lord's Prayer, there's no singular words in there at all. If you go back and look at the Lord's Prayer and the other Gospels also, there is no I, me. It's not a personal thing. If your prayers ever become selfish, you're probably on your way to a lesson. Amen. <laughs> you need to sit down with Jesus again. Because our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, our Father. And all of it is us and we and our. Us and we and our. And our prayer life should be a plural thing, not a singular thing. You shouldn't pray, Lord, my name's Jimmy and I'll take all you can give me. Amen. Or Lord, bless me and my four and no more. Amen. It shouldn't be that way. No, it should be a plural thing. Every Every uh, a pronoun in there is a plural pronoun. There's not one singular pronoun in the Lord's Prayer. So when you and I pray, it's got to be an us thing, not an I thing. The second thing he says is, where, first he starts off by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, all prayer should start out recognizing who we're talking to. This is not just some a conference with the president or a conference with somebody. We're talking to God that made the heavens and the earth and the stars and the planets and all that. Our Father who art in heaven, let's get it straight. He's the creator of all things. He, there ain't nothing I'll ever go through that will ever come close to who I'm about to talk to. So we start off giving him glory. We start off magnifying him. Instead of magnifying our problem and running in and trying to tell God how big our problem is, we start off by telling our problem how big our God is. Okay? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We start off giving glory to God. Listen, don't just run into prayer asking God for stuff. Run into prayer thanking him how wonderful and big he is. 
Then his next statement is this. He says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I'm amazed at what he didn't say. He didn't get to say, you know, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, fix all the families in the world. Fix all the problems. Fix all the marriages. Lord, fix all the marriages. Lord, fix the world economy. Lord, give us world peace, our Father in heaven. Give us, Lord, let everything be fixed. He didn't say that. He said, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You see, we cannot fix this world with the stuff that's in this world. You cannot fix this world with the stuff that's in this world. We've got to have something from another place. So he said, if you want to fix your marriage, you want to fix your city, you want to fix your home, you want to fix your children, the key to all fixes comes from another world. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. When the kingdom of God comes to this earth, now your marriage, your children, your life, your city, your nation. But what we try to do too often is we try to fix the world with the stuff that's already in the world. And Jesus said, when you pray, don't pray. The very first thing he said, if you want to start changing the world, is figure out how to get that kingdom down here. And that is what Faith City Church does radically. You guys had over, how does it start? It starts by getting people saved. The number one way to get the kingdom on the earth is to get people born again. You guys had well over 2,000 people born again last year right here in Faith City. That's how it starts. And then it continues, it continues by teaching the principles of the Word of God under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And people start being transformed from that in, into, into that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. It's a transformation that takes place so that if we want to change the world, it starts with the first request in the Lord's Prayer, which is, hey, quit trying to, you may have the means and the money and whatever it takes, and the reputation, and the authority, and the power to fix people's problems, but it doesn't necessarily mean you need to try to fix their problem with the stuff you've got. He didn't say do that. He said bring the kingdom to them. Get the kingdom to them. So when I we've counseled people for years. When they come in, sometimes I may be able to fix some of their problems with the resources God's blessed us with. But the first thing I do is I make sure whoever's sitting in my office, in my chair, counseling with Eileen and I, are you born again? Are you serving God? Are you attending a local church? Are you on fire for God? Are you tithing in that church? Are you, are you, are you serving in that church? Because if you're not doing those things, I probably can't really help you. Because it's the kingdom that changes lives. Let me say it a different way. This is the secret to life. How many of you are glad you came to church to hear the secret to life? Let me say it. I love telling it. I didn't, if you, I didn't tell it to the first, first church, okay? So they didn't get it. So I, the early bird didn't get the worm today, okay? For those of you who don't know it, there was another service right before this one. But anyways, um, the secret to life, and this is for all of y'all. This is for Pauline, Judah, and Levi. It's, it, it doesn't matter your age. It's for the grandparents here. It's for the little children here. Please teach your children what, what I'm about to tell you because it's a different way of what I just said. And it's simply this. The secret to life, the secret, there's only one secret, by the way. The secret to life and living truly the abundant life that Jesus said I came to give you. Jesus, Jesus came to give two kinds of life. Number one is he came to give eternal life. Number two, he came to give abundant life. And if you and I are going to live the abundant life that Jesus came to give us, the secret to life is learning to live in this world from that kingdom. Some people want to go to heaven when you go to heaven. It doesn't. No, no. It's the key is to bring heaven to you while you're still here. So that my wife and I have walked in a peace, even in some major storms, that passes understanding peace that doesn't even exist on this planet. We download it from another place. 
So the secret for your children is there's a wisdom that's available. You see, you have to be good at ordering off another menu, not the menu this world gave you when you were born in here, but when you get born again, there's a brand new menu you get to order off of. And when you get good at ordering off that menu, wisdom, peace, joy, blessing, and on and on and on. And you literally, it's like cheating. Guys, we get to cheat. Because it's not available to your neighbor if they're not serving God. But I get to walk in a peace. Your neighbor, it's not even eligible to walk in. I get to walk in a joy and a life and a wisdom and a blessing that comes from another world. It's called the kingdom of God. But I get to still live down here while I do it. And it's the secret to life. The secret to life is teaching your children to download that kingdom in this life, and they walk in a dimension that's literally supernatural every day of their life. Amen? Amen? So Jesus uh, said, first rattle out of the box, we worship him. Then the next thing he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven You see, we are in the business of bringing the kingdom to this earth. We're not in the business of fixing everybody's stuff, even though God may lead us to do different things. At the end of the day, there's too many people trying to use politics, trying to use, you know, technology, trying to use AI, trying to use whatever to fix man's problems. To fix man's problems, we need something else from another world called the kingdom of God. That will change the world and fix man's problems. Amen? Okay, so now he jumps over into this verse 5, and he, he begins to talk about uh, he's just this, this prayer, this random, it's almost like Jesus, I thought you were teaching on prayer, you know? Because he starts telling this parable about a friend who has a friend who comes to visit him at midnight. Who visits you at midnight besides your, besides your in-laws, amen? Come on. Come on, who shows up at midnight hungry, waking you up? It's amazing how the first friend was so willing to help and the second friend was unwilling to help. But he shows up and it's a friend going to another friend and saying, friend, I had another friend show up at my house and I do not have food to put before him and he's, I, I, I want to be a good, you know, I want to help him. He needs help. He's hungry. He's whatever. Can you give me some bread? He said, no, 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 no. He kept knocking, he kept knocking, and no doubt he began to wake up the dogs. You know, I'm going to have you know he's hollering through the door. The guy won't even open the door. Don't you know the neighbors are waking up? He said, hey, Joe, we need some bread. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, it's three loaf time. Come on, just look at him. Come on, it's three loaf time. Joe, we need some bread. Grandma comes out with her stocking on her head. Amen. And she comes out, and then the dogs are all barking. The cows start mooing. The whole the whole neighborhood wakes up because he's screaming, hollering, give me bread. And Joe's saying, I'm not getting out of bed to give you any bread. And finally, he said, man, he, he wouldn't shut up. And he says, just because he, it was his friend, he wouldn't do it. But because he, he was continued to knock, he said, I will, I will go ahead and do it. And so notice the story, number one, is based on, at midnight. I believe the theme of this story is midnight. It's at midnight. If it wasn't at midnight, there would be no issues. If it wasn't at midnight, but how many of you know midnight represents the last days? It represents the coming of Jesus. And listen, we are the midnight church. We are the last days church. Some of you are familiar with the doomsday clock that started in 1947 and Albert Einstein and the, the, the scientists who created the first atom bomb all started this thing called the Doomsday Clock in 1947. And they put it in the University of Chicago and, and they've been updating it for 70-something years now. And even this past year, they moved the Doomsday Clock from literally from 90 to 60 seconds until this, this thing, what they say, is total destruction. Destruction of the planet. Destruction of the human race. They moved it up last year, and they asked them, they said, why don't you move it up? Come on. They said, man, when we look at what's going on in the world, and these are not prophecy teachers. These are not eschatology teachers. They're not, they're not radical preachers like, and, and pastors like Pastor Lane and Lisa. Amen. No, 
No, no, not radical people who believe the Bible. No, these guys aren't even saved. They're scientists. They're technology people. They're people that understand war and nuclear war. And these people say, hey, because of the war in Ukraine, because of the pandemics, because of global warming, because of other wars that are going on, because of the upheaval in nature, we believe time is so short, we had to move the clock forward. Even the world is screaming at the church, hey guys, you are the midnight church. You are the last day's church. This is it. It's all based at midnight. It's the last days. And... and uh, I love this, the story because it's the picture of the church pounding on the door of heaven saying, I need more of you. I need more of you in the midnight hour for me and for my friends. Listen, the last day's church is not supposed to be crying or hiding out in a shelter or holding on. No, we're supposed to be pursuing after God with everything we've got. We're called in the last days to be God chasers. Amen. Come on, God chasers. And so you say, Pastor Jeff, it's the last days. What should I do? Should I need to go buy a shelter? Or, or do I need to go put a shelter, on, bury it underground and hide and get some fruit and put it in there? No, listen, I'm telling you right now, we're supposed to just be radically beating on the door of heaven, knocking, seeking, asking, knocking, seeking, asking, pursuing after God. Amen. So real quickly, i got to go quick. Real quickly, the postures of 2024. Posturing for 2024 so that I'm ready to go through the door. That kind of rhymes. Let me say it again. That sounded good. Posturing in 2024 so I'm ready to go through the four doors. Amen? Amen. So honestly, if it, you know, it, it doesn't just happen. Overflow doesn't just happen. Trust me. Like Lane said, I look young, but I've been doing this for a long time. And I'm telling, I'm telling you right now, it doesn't overflow doesn't just happen because you're saved. And I've got more news. Overflow doesn't just happen because you joined Faith City Church or Family Faith Church. Amen? No, you, you, you have to posture yourself for overflow. You got to do something, and then God will do what he said he will do. Amen? So real quickly, the posture for 2024. Number one is the posture of prayer. The whole, the whole thing is about prayer. So the posture of prayer. Remember, prayer is your greatest weapon. Intercessory prayer is the greatest weapon of the church and of every believer. It's the secret weapon. It's the greatest weapon. It has no boundaries. It can go anywhere. It can go behind doors. It can go behind the iron curtain, behind the bamboo curtain. It can go into the local school district. You may not be able to go, but your kid may be going, but your prayers can go with your kid into that local school district. It can go into the prison and behind the prison bars. It can go into those family members that have X'd you out of their life and won't even return your phone call. I got news for you. They may not answer that phone, but those prayers go right into those family members in Jesus' name. It knows no boundaries. It can go into Israel. It can go into all parts of the world. I'm telling you, it can go into IC units, ICU units, it can go into hospitals. It can go anywhere. It's our greatest weapon. The second thing is intercessory prayer is our greatest influencer. It's a change maker. It's an equalizer. If you need change in your life, quit complaining about your problems and start praying. An influencer, your intercessory prayer can change the dial. It can change the situation. If you need change, start using the power of prayer. Talking about it and complaining about it will never change anything. It'll never change anything. See, when you start carrying the power of prayer in your life, and, and I have it in my notes, but just remember all the, the weapons of our warfare and all the armor, the armor that we put on, and it goes through, it names all the armor. Then it says the sword of the Spirit and, and then the shield of faith by which we quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. But I'm going to tell you right now, a sword and a shield is not going to get much done. The very next verse says praying always with all prayer. The heavy artillery, the heavy artillery is the praying always with all kind of prayer. That's the nuclear bomb. That's the tanks. That's the F-16 uh, jet fighters is the praying always, which is part of our armor that we put on. Amen. It is the, what we might call the aggressive armor that we put on, the offensive armor that we put on. 
Um, we were coming over here this morning, and and uh, and we were driving down the road, and and my wife was driving, and I'll just confess in church, in the confession booth up here, that she has a heavy foot. Amen. She drives. She always has. It's like really fast. And uh, man, I, I, I want to say we were doing ninety, and we weren't even late. I said we're not late. Slow down. We're early. If we were late, there's somewhat of an excuse, right? But you know what was even weirder than that? There was no other Sunday morning drivers. They were going as fast as we were. You know, they say a Sunday morning driver is a slow driver. Do we have any Sunday morning drivers in here? You, you, you drive slow. Let me see your hand. Two people. Two people, okay? And, man, well, she was like 90 miles an hour, and the cars around us, it was like a racetrack. There wasn't a lot of traffic on I-45 at all. It was like a racetrack. Everyone, choo, 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 choo. And then a highway patrolman pulls out onto the freeway. And the entire atmosphere of the entire freeway changed. She, I thought we were going to skid in the middle of the freeway. And I have to confess, another confession, we have a radar detector in all of our vehicles, okay? It's a good investment, by the way. And, uh, and uh, that radar detector, woo, 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 woo. I was like, man, you're going to get hit from behind if you hit that hard. And, uh, and, and we're all slowing down, and everybody around us, brake lights are going on and all this. But literally, that highway patrolman was just going so slow and so cool, minding so I think he was on his way to church, honestly. And, and, and his police, and driving his police car to church because he didn't act like he even care. He wasn't shooting or he just had his radar detector on and, and he just pulled out there and so cool and then maybe about two miles, four miles down the road he exits off like he's going to church. But I got news for you. Everything around it got scared. Everything around him. He was minding his own business like he was just in his own little world but he changed our world. And listen, when you put your intercessory prayer hat on, that's what you are. You are the highway patrolman pulling into the freeway of life. Pulling into the freeway of life. And you may not know it, but every demon, every sickness, every assignment against your children starts, starts oh my God, oh my God. And they start jumping back, you know. And, uh, and hitting the brakes. And then if you do it enough, they'll get their own radar detector. Amen? The devil will get a radar detector because he don't want to get once you showing up by surprise in his life. And, uh, and so uh, um, it's an influence. And then number three, it's a great stabilizer. If you're going through something this year, you went through something last year, maybe you've been going through something for 20 years. I don't know. By the way, this is the, uh, the holiday of sanctification and new beginnings. And, and maybe you've been going through something. In James chapter uh, uh, 5, verse 13 says this. It says, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. That word afflicted means suffering pressure. The word we use today is called stress. Is anybody stressed? Is anybody stressed? Is anybody suffering pressure from circumstances? Let me say, we're, we're, in the, we're the midnight church. We're, the, we're in the last days. We're close to the coming of the Lord. Whoever lives in that generation is going to feel pressure that no other generation will ever feel. So because we are in a cosmic clash between good and evil and light and darkness, just the spiritual warfare that's going on in the heavenlies is going to affect you and I. And the other battles that are going on, this is going to be an election year, and you're going to see a lot of lies, a lot of mudslinging, a lot of junk going on. I'm telling you right now, keep your eyes on Jesus, number one. Amen. Hey, listen. And it says, is any among you afflicted? Is anybody in stress? Is anybody suffering pressure from circumstances? Verse 13 says, let him pray. It didn't say let him complain. It didn't say let him call Pastor Lane. It says let him pray. That, listen, God gave a prescription for your stress. It's called prayer. And you'll be shocked if you'll just start going to the Lord and fellowshipping with God, how He, in turn, will take that stress and lift it off of you, and you'll be able to walk away with peace and joy once again. Why? Because intercessory prayer is the great stabilizer to bring stability to your shaky life in the last days. Number two, real quickly, is the posture of persistence. The posture of persistence. Um, just I want to remind you that 
that in the story, he just kept knocking, knock, 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 and he kept knocking, and, and he kept knocking, and, and, and the guy, you know, get away, get out of, get out of here. Kept knocking, he kept knocking, and, 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 and he says, I, I'm not getting up, I'm not getting up. But he kept knocking, and he kept knocking. How many of you know faith doesn't give up? Faith is very persistent. Faith keeps believing. Faith keeps pressing and keeps on praise and keeps praying, believes and keeps believing. That's why I love the story of Jacob in the Old Testament because Jacob, when he was born, was kind of given a, you know, a, a name that, that wasn't uh, the best. You kind of like take or grab her. You know, when you saw him coming down the road, you held on to your wallet while he, when he walked by. And... Uh, <laughs> And he just, you know, he didn't get a fair shake every time they called his name. They said, hey, take her, hey, grab her. And, uh, and so that was kind of the world he tracked in. And he was kind of off a little bit, and, and, and he was in that world. But I'm going to have you know, just because you've been dealt a, a, a hand of cards, you don't have to stick with that hand. Some of you feel like, Pastor Jeff, you don't know my family. You don't know my dad. You don't know my mom. You don't know my family. They're all coconuts. But listen, I don't care what hand you've been dealt. You can throw that hand away and get a brand new hand. Come on. Come on you can get a brand new hand. And that's what Jacob did. The Bible says that the angel came and he wrestled with that angel and wrestled. And finally, we found out what the wrestling was about. The angel was trying to get away. Finally, the angel said, it's almost daylight. And the angel said, let me go. And Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go. Until you bless me. And let me just tell you, we have to be persistent enough where even if, listen, if it cost us, he limped from that day forward. Whatever it costs me, I'm going to get the blessing of God in my life. And I'm not going to let go. I'm going to be persistent. Listen, there is a nation in the world today called Israel that started with a man who just was persistent and would not give up. Because it is that place where you're introduced to the name Israel. God says, I'm going to change your name from Jacob to Israel, which means a prince with God. Come on, guys. If we're willing to fight and wrestle, God will change our nature and our name. Come on, clap one time. Clap like you got it. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, it's three loaf time. And by the way, that doesn't mean it's time to go to lunch right now. Okay, I'm not done. <laughs> Posture priority. Number three is that I see in this particular story the posture of priority. Okay? So um, that's the third one. And I see several priorities here. Number one, I see the priority of bread. When he was going to knock on the door, I see the priority of bread in this story. He's not after fellowship. Hey, let me come fellowship with you. Hang out, you know, and we can just talk. And No, no, he's after something. He wants the bread. And it's a priority of bread. And you and I, thank God for Faith City Church and thank God for the fellowship and the interaction and the connections. But at the end of the day, make sure you get the bread that's being served at this table every week because we come for the bread. Amen. We're coming for the bread, which the bread represents Jesus and represents the anointed Word of God. In the Bible, it's Jesus and the Word, and that's the bread. And there are people that go to churches every week and never get either of those. But I'm telling you, at this, at this house, they're serving good. Listen, my weakness is good, hot bread. If it's yeasty, now my wife doesn't care that much for it. Her weakness is chips and hot sauce. What can I say? Yeah, yours too. The, Jew, the Arnold family, I think that's all of their weakness. But no, y'all, how many of you understand when fresh bread is being baked and it's, it's yeasty and all that and you cut it and put butter on it and it melts? And so that's what they serve right here. You yeah, were fasting, that's right. But faith's, f sorry about that. You can tell, right? Um, faith City Church, that's what's being served here every week is the good, good bread. Make sure you get it. That's what we received when we got saved. When we started going to Lakewood Church and, and, and for the, all our lives sitting under great men of God, we received, we were after the bread. Even when it was not comfortable, 
even if it's midnight, I don't care. Whatever it takes, if it's not easy, if it's not convenient, if it's out of the norm, if we have to travel 40 miles one way for 20 years to go to church, which we did, 40 miles one way for 20 years to get the bread, we're going to do that. Some people won't go across the street to get the bread. My family, I owe my parents so much. 40 miles, one way. Every week, we never missed a service. And I owe them so much because they were willing to pay a price, even though it was a sacrifice. We couldn't even afford the gas when we first got saved. But even though it was a sacrifice and it was out of the norm, I even told them one time, I said, man, there's a church like right around the corner. Why don't we go out there? No, we're going all the way to southeast Houston. All right. Even if it's out of the norm, even if it's a sacrifice, make sure in this life you put a priority on the bread. Come on, clap one more time and thank God. Amen. And then the priority of single-heartedness or the priority of the person. You know what's amazing about this is he did not go knock on the door when the guy rejected him, knock one more time, the guy rejected him, and then go to the next house and go to, instead leave Joe's house and go to Bill's house. Oh, I, Joe didn't help me. And complain about Joe for the rest of his life. No, he kept knocking on that one door. And listen, once you find God, you don't need any more doors to knock on. Once you get born again, you got one door to knock on. And you have to put the priority on the person, even though you don't get it on your timetable. You've got to know the government is not your source. Somebody else is not your source. Even your job is not your source. God is your source. And you keep knocking and knocking and knocking. And don't give up. Just keep on knocking. Because he did not go. Listen, politics is not the answer for our world. Listen, technology is not the answer. Education is not the answer. Medicine is not the answer. We better keep knocking on the door of God if we want an answer in the last days. We're living in the last days and people are going to be looking for answers. We just went through a pandemic recently and if you think that's the last one, just listen, there's more stuff coming. And people were running to and fro in fear in every direction. But we know what door we're knocking on. We're knocking on the door of God. Our trust, amen. We don't, like David said, I'm not putting my trust in chariots or men, but I'm going to put my trust in God, amen. We're going to remember the name of the Lord our God. So uh, the priority of the person. And then the third thing is the priority of ministry. What's beautiful about this story is he wasn't even getting the bread for himself. He wasn't getting the bread for his children. He wasn't getting the bread for his brother or his wife or his any other brethren. It wasn't the bread for the brethren. It was the bread for the stranger. He called him a friend. But how many of you know all the lost people out there in the world, they're not our enemy. They're our friend. Come on, somebody shout amen. amen. Come on, I, I, I'm not angry at the gay community. I'm not angry at the, at the people worshiping other religions. Many of them, it's all they've ever known. It's because we haven't God brought any bread to them yet. Come on, we're not we're not angry. We're not angry at the world and angry at people who are against God. We're not, we're not angry at any of them. They're our friends. And that's what this represents. This represents the people in the world who are all of the suffering, the sighing, the dying, the crying humanity around the world, and guess what? They're the ones that are about to show up at Faith City at midnight. This, the, the, listen, in the last days, listen carefully, the friends, many <laughs> quotes, the friends are coming to the church. Make no mistake, I'm going to say it again, they're looking for something real, they're looking for something relevant, they're looking for something that's got some integrity to it and some honor to it, and you have the highest level of all of that right here at Faith City Church. And they're coming, Faith City. Guess what, Faith City? Guess what? The friends are coming. Okay. <laughs> they're coming. They're coming. Friends are coming. But let me warn you, they may not come in the morning or at 10 or 11. They may show up at midnight. And they may be hungry and want food. And it means that you and I have got to trust in God more than we've ever trusted in God. He didn't ask for one loaf. He asked for three loaves. 
It's a three loaf time, man. Don't if you in the last days, what this tells me, if you were going to ask for one loaf and needed one loaf, you triple your order, whatever it is in the last days. But God says in the last days, you're going to need a triple order in the last days for everything you ask for. Amen. So real quickly, the last one is the priority of knowing. It's important to know what you know and know it. He was fully persuaded. He knew where his answer was. He knew how to get it. He was fully persuaded. He didn't go from this house to that house, this person to that person. He didn't give up. He just kept on knocking, and he kept on knocking. And you and I have to know so well that we're willing to burn the bridges to any other destiny that shows up in our life. You know that God's will is the only thing for you. Let me just remind you that if you don't know that you know that you know and you don't teach your children to be fully persuaded, there's a world out there that will unpersuade them. <clears throat> there's a bunch of talk going on out there. There's social media. There's more voices out there than we've ever had ever. And they're, they're waiting. They're waiting. Make sure your children and you are fully persuaded that God is the way, the only way, and the truth. Amen. There was a guy who was going to commit suicide and he was going to jump off the bridge and commit suicide and somebody called 911 and the policeman came running up and he said, you don't have to commit suicide. It's not that bad. The guy said, it's that bad. My life is terrible. And so he said, you don't have to jump. The policeman said, you don't have to jump. He said, I'm jumping. He said, I'll tell you, stop, wait, give me just 10, wait 10 minutes. He said, I'm going to talk for five minutes and tell you why you shouldn't jump. Then you talk for five minutes and tell me your story. So the policeman talked for five minutes so eloquently and just told him all these reasons why he shouldn't jump and all that. And then after that five minutes, the guy talked for five minutes. And then after that, the guy puts his hand out, the policeman puts his hand out, and they both jumped. And listen, that represents a lot of people in Christianity today. They're not fully persuaded. So they leave our churches, these young people leave our churches and they go to secular universities and instead of winning their professor to Jesus, the professor turns them into humanistic philosophers who don't even believe in God anymore. So I'm saying we better be fully persuaded in whom we believe and who we know and we're sold out. And we, like Eileen and I did a lot, we burn the bridge. There is no other option for us. It's the will of God or nothing. Amen. Amen. I mean, we're, we're all in. Burn the bridges all the way in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me just close with this. Uh, um, and the, the last, the last uh, one is uh, the posture of, and let me just say this. Let me say one more thing. Make sure you're fully persuaded. And the reason is because it keeps us on the right path. It keeps us on the right road. And so we don't end up on the detours that so often appeal to us as we go down the road of life. And listen, there's too many detours off of the road. When we grew up, I'm a little bit older than Lane, but not much, okay, let's make it clear. But when we grew up, there wasn't that many detours. I mean, you could serve God, and there was a few detours that might appeal, or there might, you know, distractions. But listen, your young people today, they've got a distraction and a detour every few feet on their pathway with God. Let me just say there's too many detours in America and in the world today. Let me say it again. There's too many detours. There's too many detours. And for that reason, you have to make sure that you plant the Word of God deep inside of yourself and deep inside of your children. Amen? Posture of perception. My last one, and I'm done. The posture of perception. Okay, so I just let me just say it this way because I'm out of time. Um, is that you want to make sure that as we go into 2024, that you posture yourself in such a way that you begin to see life with your spiritual eyes, not just your natural eyes. That you learn to follow your inner man, not your natural man. You learn to make decisions based not on your circumstances, but based on what the Word of God and the Holy Ghost is saying to you at the time. If you want to if you want to exceed and go through the doors and overflow in 2024, you have to listen to what's on the inside instead of respond to what's happening on the outside. And when you do that, God will lead you and you will literally avoid battles you should have never been in in the first place. 
Ooh, just say amen like you got that. See, it's not important what other people are saying. It's only important what is God saying. Amen. Oh, but they say this and they say this and, and the news said this and the news said that. It don't matter. And they're, they said this and on the news this and on that and that and that. It doesn't matter. What's God saying? And that's what I'm going to follow. Hey, man, what's God saying? 2024, make sure you tune in to the right channel, the God channel on the inside of you because you're going to need it as you go forward. When we went through this pandemic and as we go through life in the future, there's going to be a lot of people trying to push you and your family and do this to do that and to do this and do that. And you have to tune in. What is God saying? Amen? Amen, amen. Go ahead and clap one time. Clap, clap, clap. We are right now in what I call the holiday of sanctification and new beginnings. I believe it's the greatest holiday of the year. Christmas is great. There's an anointing on Christmas. Easter is great. There's a great anointing on Easter. Y'all are going to get hundreds saved at Easter. Y'all are. Y'all are going to get hundreds saved right here. But listen, I believe there's a great anointing on the new year. And I don't, people don't recognize it. It's an anointing of sanctification. What does sanctification mean? It means simply means you take something in your life and you set it apart away from you. And it and it's a, it's, it's a holiday of new beginnings. Sanctification and new beginnings. What am I saying? I'm saying there's some stuff, maybe in all of our lives, that we need to wrap up and leave it in 2023 and not take it with us in 2024. There's some attitudes, some stuff we said, some stuff we did. Some, with some gossip we talked about. We said some negative things about people. Some of you have been carrying hurts and wounds. The things you've been carrying that you've been carrying for 30 years. But guess what? Today's your day. Because today, we're going to let the special anointing on this week take what we couldn't get rid of our whole life. And we're going to let the special anointing, just like there's a special anointing on Christmas, there's a special anointing right now to take the unforgiveness, to take the bitterness, to take the hurt, to take the wound, to take the addiction, to take the generational iniquity and put it in 2023 and leave it there so we can march on in 2024. So with every head bowed, I want you to think in your own life right now. Maybe it's an attitude. Maybe it's a hurt. Some of you, maybe your parents went through a divorce and you're still dealing with that. Maybe some of you had a spouse walk out on you. Maybe some of you have generational iniquities of anger, of jealousy, of fear, or some other kind of generational iniquity. But just close your eyes right now and think of what that might be because we're fixing to wrap it up and we're fixing to leave it in 2023. Right now, in your mind, think of what it is. Some of you may have several packages you need to leave back. Some of you have, may have quite a bit of luggage you need to leave in 2023. You said things, you did things, you were hurt. Some of you were abused. You were abused. You were abused 30 years ago and you still have not been able to get past that. Today is a day by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the sanctification of this blessed holiday of a new year. You're going to take that thing once and for all, and you're going to wrap it up, and you're going to leave it in 2023, and you are not going to let it stay in 2024. So whatever it is, wrap it up right now and literally throw it behind you in 2023. Because we're not going to walk in that. We're not going to live that way. We're not going to let that fear dominate us. We're not going to let any of that stuff dominate us. We're going to walk in freedom. We're going to walk in purity. We're going to walk in honor. We're going to walk in, in literally like Jesus would walk, a Jesus style of honor and blessing and abundant life that he's called for us. So this, there's never a better time of the year to get rid of that baggage. So, Father, we ask you to help us right now. We choose with our will to put this baggage in the past, to put these hurts in the past, Lord, to put these habits in the, ha in the past, to put these addictions in the past, to, put, to bring forgiveness to the table and put all the hurts, the wounds, and the pain of the past and leave it in the past. Just do it right now between you and God. Do it. Say, Lord, I put it back there. I get rid of it. I put it there. I get rid of it. 
I sanctify. I walk in, in the power of sanctification. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just keep your heads bowed for a moment. Father, we receive that in Jesus' name. We set ourselves in agreement with that prayer of faith, Lord God. We walk in freedom in the name of Jesus. We walk in sound freedom in your revelation, Father. We thank you right now that this will be a year of tipping point as we posture ourselves for success in the mighty name of Jesus. Just keep your heads bowed for a second. If you're here this morning, you say, you know what, man, that, that message really spoke to my heart. Listen, do not let it leak through and walk out those doors, but remember to posture yourself. But you might be saying, well, I'm, man, I'm not even, I've never even made Jesus my Lord. I, I, I need to get right with God. Listen, today is your day. Don't wait one more day. The only way to heaven is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible says, that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man will come unto the Father but by me. And the only way is to confess him as your Lord and Savior. That's the only way to heaven. You might, so if you say, man, I've never made him my Lord. I've never confessed him with my mouth. Listen, today's your day. Don't wait one more day. Why wait? What greater day than the first Sunday of the year to give your heart to Christ? And maybe you have been saved and you've gone to church and you've done that, but you've just fallen away. You're not even where you used to be with God. But you say, man, today's the day I'm coming back. I want to make a fresh new commitment. Let today be your day. Something stirring inside of you. You feel this. Maybe you, you want to, you might describe it as a nervousness or fidgety. Listen, that's your spirit saying it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Don't wait. Because there's a window of opportunity. You might not have another one. But I want to say, if that's you today and you want to make Jesus your Lord, make sure that you're going to heaven or you want to come back to God, I want to give you an opportunity with every head bowed and every eye closed. If that's you're here, you're here this morning, you're watching or you're watching online, you want to make that decision. I'm talking to you with every eye closed. If that's you and you say, I want to make I want to make sure I'm going to heaven or I want to come back to Jesus today and make a fresh new commitment. If that's you with every eye closed, just lift up your hand to heaven and with an uplifted hand say, pray for me. I want to be saved. I see that hand, see that hand, see that hand. Anybody else say, nobody looking around. This is family. We love y'all and nobody judging. Man, we just want to welcome you in the family. We love you. If you're watching online, just type in the chat. Hey, that's me. That's me. I want to give my life to Christ or I want to come back to God. Praise God. You can put your hands down. Everybody look at me for a second. And let's all just stand up in the presence of the Lord. And let's just say this prayer. And if you lifted your hand for the first time, listen, say it from the bottom of your heart. We're going to all do it with you as a family. But let's just do it and mean it because this is your eternity right now changing. Your eternity is changing right now in 2024. Everybody under the sound of my voice just say, Jesus, come into my heart. I make you Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again on the third day. I will never turn my back on you, but I will live for you all the days of my life in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody shouted amen. Come on and let's rejoice. The Bible says when one person comes to repentance that all of heaven rejoices. Well, listen, all of heaven is throwing a party for you. And I just want to say this before we close. I want to say again, Pastor Lisa, come up here. Yeah, and Pastor Ali, you want to agree? She, I know you probably don't. But how many of y'all would love for Pastor Ali to agree? This is our spiritual mama right here, by the way. You want to bless us? Just say something. So glad to be here with you this morning. Lane and Lisa, I mean, they are family to us, and they're the greatest youth pastors in the universe. I mean, most youth pastors, listen, the average span of a youth pastor is eight months. They were at Family Faith Church for 22 years. So they're going to get the faithfulness reward in heaven, so y'all just stand way back behind them. They're going to be way up there. And they're, they, they, of course, they're going to be incredible. They're incredible, faithful pastors that will be forever and ever. You know, faithful pastors, you can trust them. They are full of integrity. And uh, so y'all are so blessed to have them. And, uh, we, yeah, we had to give them to y'all. So, yeah, y'all take good care of them. We'll come get them back, you know. 
We are so glad to be here with y'all this morning. We love you. Love you guys so much and so honored. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Arlene. Yeah, y'all, y'all had a, actually, I wanted her to agree, but I didn't want her to say all that, but <laughs> thank you. But, uh, but uh, those who got, those who have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior for the first time, we do have water baptism um, January the 21st, water baptism. In two weeks, yes. And also, if you want to get connected, get involved in the ministry, in the church body, uh, we're going to be having a special party just for you. It's going to be um, this week, this Thursday at 6 p.m., and we're going to have it here. I know we're doing fasting, but Pastor Lane really wanted burgers on the grill. And uh, so we're doing burgers. I was going to do tomato soup, you know, salad, soup and salad. Lane says, nobody wants that. So anyways, we're taking a break, so we'll add the the extra date later. So, But um, we're about to dismiss. So all everybody that's involved in ministry, all of our volunteers and then ministry leaders and everybody this Thursday at six o'clock here, we're going to have a special meeting. It's going to turn it into a party. We're good at that. I learned that from pastors, but but we're turning it into a party, but we're going to be sharing vision for this year and um, we're going to be eating and just having a blast. So please come bring your children. We're going to have stuff going on for the kids. But I just want to say that that was a prophetic word. How many of y'all received that? Posture yourself to go through those doors. Don't just expect blessing. Don't just expect direction. Don't just expect everything good. you got to posture yourself and get your priorities right and get, and get your perspective right. Hallelujah. And get your mouth right. Your perspective is, is affected by what you say. So it's so important. That was such a yeah, and be persistent. That was so good. And something you said, the secret of life, you got to live in the kingdom of God on this earth. We're talking about, well, one day, one day, one day when I get into Beulah land, Beulah land. <laughs> Come on, I said, Pastor Jeff going to get in the glory right there and I say, but listen, no, no, we need to live in the kingdom of heaven right here and right now. And I've seen them do that in front of me for decades and, and we are endeavoring to do that. Just what about COVID or what about the economy? What about the president? Oh my God, what about the war? Well, what about it? Yeah, those are going on, but I'm, I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm a child of God. I'm living in the kingdom. I'm an ambassador. I'm in this world, but not of it. I might be treading on the enemy's territory, but I'm still a citizen of heaven. I am an ambassador. And even if I'm in the enemy's territory, because I'm an ambassador, if he attacks me, he attacks heaven. I am walking on holy ground, and I live in the kingdom of heaven right here and right now. And that is the secret. That is the secret of life. And how you see these people, oh, they're always, always blessed, man. I don't know why. They're just always blessed. Like, anybody ever saw something like that? You get that, like, aggravated? I mean, I have in my past. But the, you know what the key is? Is they're living in the kingdom of heaven. They've made their mind up. And, and that's what we endeavor to do. Not that bad stuff's not going to happen. But, man, listen, we are overcomers, and we can overcome anything because we live in the kingdom of heaven. By faith, we overcome. We're in the word. We're tithing. All the, he gave, like, ten sermons in one right there. Yeah, that little counseling session he talked about, he just gave some life-changing. So, I mean, you, be, you want some counseling, but, hey, are you in church? Are you tithing? Are you, know, just, are you reading the Bible? I mean, that was, like, life-changing right there. But I'm telling you, you live in the kingdom, and then you don't have to worry about recessions and all that because you are blessed of God and praise God. So anyway, thank y'all so much. We're so blessed and honored to have y'all here. And um, remember, Wednesday night we have service and then Thursday night it's going to be special. Bring your family, bring your children. If you're involved at all in volunteer ministry or you would like to be, we would love for you to come Thursday night. So anyway, God bless you. Pastor Lisa, you want to dismiss it? Father, we just thank you for every person that is in the house Father, we just pray a blessing over every person, Lord, as they go, wherever they go, that there will be a light in this world, Lord. We just dispatch your angels around them, that you will guard them and speak through them and and, and guide them in every situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all are dismissed. Feeling blessed.